Production Productions presents the math of ESP. Why it works even if you don't believe in it. Um, first off, you know, let me let me say, you know, the, the the finger here is doing good, but it has to regrow some skin there. There's actually almost a quarter of an inch wide gap there where where the skin just isn't connected. And trying to let me put the cup down, get this. Trying to get the finger to you know stay closed like that is kind of a pain. And in case you people don't understand, you ever try and cut anything? Yeah. <laughs> Same problem with typing. Just basic survival. I'm by myself. I don't have anybody in here with me. So yes, I have to cut my own veggies or whatever. You know, make food and cleaning and all that kind of stuff. My hair, obviously, because this is not closed and the water here comes out of the tap green so yeah I'm washing my hair with real water occasionally they have started putting chlorine in it um, I do not know if it is just particular to this area of town or it's the whole system I know the other place I was living at um, I never smelled chlorine come out of that tap um, and it's, a, it's just a general water supply. Um, but I do know that kind of shortly after I posted one of my Occupy ISS videos about the fact that water is one of your conveyors of mutation, um, that they now do, I'm not gonna say regularly, but apparently about once a month now there is chlorine being flushed through the pipes because I will go over and turn on my water and get hit in the nose with chlorine and I grew up in Southern California so I know what chlorinated water tastes like um, but yeah it's, it's kind of obvious that for a few hours a day every three to four weeks they're pumping chlorine through to keep things clean so I don't want to get my hands in that water any more than logically necessary um, shaving my son I don't think my son has ever seen me with a full white beard I'm sure because I turned white after he was taken from me um, but also that uh, you know I, I, again you're dealing with throwing water on the face and cleaning and all that kind of stuff so I'm not shaving at the moment so yeah I know I'm ugly what can I say hey I'm a single solo I'm a solo lobo what do I care about how ugly I am okay so the data is still real folks you know being, being crazy um, speaking of data I have to go back to the moon base thing um, and although it was just a satellite, the 1970s when I when I realized I needed to use the poles for my cities because I would have the the Terminator line there all the time, I understood and knew that the moon itself rotates. Okay, so you don't really ever have a Terminator out here in one place. It it, it rotates around the moon as it goes around. There is no dark side of the moon which a lot of flat earth people and fake NASA people tend to scream that oh oh the backside doesn't exist or the backside's got aliens and all that um, whether or not the backside has aliens okay we don't see it there is there is a side that never faces us the same side with a, a I think it's about a five to six degree shift back and forth it does that's why the image changes in our cameras and stuff like that but um, no, we don't see the backside, but the backside is obviously at some point in time facing the sun. So the people that are on these other areas, basically all they have to do is, of course, is you build your solar panels, and then you know you drop down a few feet below your your solar panels there, and you have your radiators, which are exposed basically to absolute zero space. Okay, the the solar panels are blocking it they're in the shade they will be cold uh, the variation of degrees there of, of you know some kind of a wind blowing through right from the sunny area it is you know I'm not going to say non-existent um, you know, there is a tiny amount of heat transfer but you're not going to have a huge rise so the people in other areas that easy they can be using um, 
you know, a cave in a mountain over ledges, which are not, you know, any safer than using your solar panels. Uh, the solar panels, obviously, you're going to be able to inspect the struts and stands and keep them up and stuff. So you would be still be able to have your your solar power, your cooling, and your you know your your solar power producing both electricity and hot water, hot air type of a system. But you need to be at the poles to have what you know the the totally passive system that would always be operating, because as the terminator goes around you have your equipment spaced out in different areas and, and a similar system like that or whatever and you know in the very tiniest area obviously you're, the terminator is going to be rotating around you're going to you're going to have something always in the shade as opposed to being in the direct sun which is quite hot area so they need to make that correction. Um, I had spoken about that. You know, you use the whole Terminator, but you don't really have it. But you can make the same type of a system anywhere on the moon. Therefore, yes, it is all habitable. It is all possible. Um, you know, if the conspiracy theorists people are correct and there's a bunch of aliens up there, obviously you won't do like you did the indigenous people and just. Claim them non, you know, non-human and killable. They're aliens, right? From another planet. I guess they're not human, but you still don't have permission to kill them just because you want to. They might be friendly people, and it would be a lot nicer to be friendly and stop learning the arrogance of this planet. Um, the other thing is, is that today is is they itch, folks. They itch. They they they're scar tissue all over the place. Um, the uh, other thing is, is today is December 12, 2018 and like I was saying in a video that I think I haven't actually posted yet, I need to cut and work on, um, that you know, this is several, at least several different conspiracy sites are talking about this being a special day and whether it's the financial collapse or it's a, you know, uh, what is it, Nubaru, the Planet X that nobody can find that's a professional photographer but all of these other people that don't know anything about photography, just keep getting really awesome photographs of this this big huge planet just right there in our sky. Um, keep in mind folks, I'm a night photographer, I've been doing this for at least 45, 46 years, I've been claiming professionalism since 1974, uh, freelance photographer, um, you know, which means, you know, 44 years I've been out there staring at the skies. I have seen UFOs, and I can discuss some stories that will definitely make you stop and wonder. Um, I also know science, and I know what goes on as far as seeing a satellite or an asteroid or, um, you know, one of the, the beacon satellites up there, I've seen, I've seen the ISS, I've seen the space shuttle, you know, this kind of stuff up there in the heavens. So I'm quite aware of what things are and how they move. I've tracked an awful lot of airplanes across the sky. So I am, you know, scientifically understanding that I have seen something that cannot exist according to any data released by any government or scientific form on this planet, okay? Um, but uh, yeah, there, there, there's a variety of things. So, this, you know, like I say, today is December 12th, and, you know, we're, we're alive and kicking down here. Uh, I don't see anything, you know, <laughs> majorly weird happening yet, but, you know, it's only 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so, or my time. Um, so we do have uh, at least nine more hours of something to happen on December 12th here and of course you know all the way around to the international date line for December 12th that means basically we have I think somewhere closer to about 12, 12 13 hours something like that I'd have to check I was just chatting with a friend in New Zealand and he's just starting his day right now. It was about eight, nine o'clock in the morning. So, but uh, yeah, there, there's a variety of things going on. Possible, as they say, um, United States. You know, my spirits are doing a good job. They're they're definitely 
laying down the fire and ice storms, the, you know, the, the, the warm flooding rains, followed by heavy snows, by sheets of ice, by sleet, by hail, uh, wind storms, you know, the fire storms, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, yes, the United States, the elite 1% is still, you know, basically going down the drain because any place you look on the planet, there is weird, weird stuff happening. Uh, it is not in any way localized. Um, the stock market is bouncing like a yo-yo, which anybody that has gone back and looked at the 1928 uh, Great Depression stock market collapse uh, knows is exactly on time for a very, very near, near future collapse, okay? We're talking about something where most of the indicators are showing that, you know, at, at the very least you're looking at something happening within months. Um, and, you know, if, if the central banks around the world, you know, turn on their printing presses and start printing money like crazy, which will be inflation, there's no other word for it. They have no more assets, so therefore they are creating paper just to create it. So any dollars or marks or pesos or pounds or rubles or, you know, whatever you want to call money around the planet, all of the central banks have to do this to save themselves, whether they're China, India, Russia, Korea, Japan, United States, Mexico, you know, all, all, you know, all of the European countries, the Euro, and, and, and going back to their original, you know, uh, monies and stuff before that Euro, um, yeah, they're all, they're all creating, you know, money out of nothing, fiat currency. So that is inflation, whether you want to believe it or not, you know, the governments will tell you, no, it's not, but when you realize that it costs you 10 cents more, for the item that you went into the store for, yes, there is the inflation right in your face. When you go to the gas pump and it costs five cents more for a gallon of gas or a liter of gas, yes, that is inflation, folks. Uh, governments are just simply <laughs> blah, 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 like poli politics, yes. Notice that, poly, you know, multiple, and then ticks, those blood suckers, yeah, multiple, multiple blood suckers, suckers is politics. So anyway, just a just a little chat session, letting you know I'm alive and well, and uh, trying to laugh and smile at what I can out there in the world. The hand has been open like this now for some time. Um, it is trying to do something, and like I just showed you with the knife there, obviously holding stuff right now. It can be quite hilarious. Typing is quite hilarious. So in here by myself and laughing with the jokes. And of course, chatting with people around the world on the internet too, to some extent. So, Larga vida a la revolution. Long live the revolution, folks. Occupy ISS, Rainbow Warriors. Anytime you other folks want to start stepping up and, and not necessarily joining me, but somehow acknowledging that you know that's what you are. You are no longer fighting for a single cause. You're fighting for your whole planet. Yeah.